So as the sun rises, the blooms of the pumpkin and the squash start to open. Knowing the difference between a male and a female squash or pumpkin flower is imp critically important in understanding how to be able to pollinate them. I want to show you in this bed behind me, firstly the difference between a male flower and a female one, then how to manually pollinate them by hand, because that's the only way I pollinate them, and then also how to bag them to prevent the fruit fly or pumpkin fly from getting to the fruits before you are able to bag them. Let's take a close up and show you what you need to know to make sure that you get a decent pumpkin and squash harvest the next time you grow them. So first things first, let's have a look at the difference between the male and the female flower before they actually open. Once they open, you look at the little stomens and it's quite easy to identify. Sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult before they've opened. Why you want to know this is you come out every morning to have a look at your squashes and your pumpkins to know which ones need hand pollinating. If you can identify in advance how many females are going to be opening within the next couple of days, you can just be a little bit more prepared. In essence, what we're looking at is this is a female and this is a male. How we tell is there's a miniature version of the fruit behind the flower. So there's a flower over there and you can see it is all flower. There is nothing behind it. If we look at this one, there is flower and then there's a little baby marrow behind it. Now what will happen is this female flower will open. We're going to take the male and pollinate it. The female flower will close. And if it's pollinated correctly, this little patty pan is now going to turn into a big ripe fruit. So that's visually how to tell the difference between male and female flowers before they've opened. Now let's have a look and see the difference between the male and female zucchini, squash, pumpkin flowers once they have opened. So in front of me here I have a male flower and this is actually the flower I'm going to use to pollinate the female that I'm going to show you now. If you look in the background, there's a pollinated pumpkin. It's a Jack B. Little, so it's a really nice orange pumpkin, just a little miniature version, which is perfect for urban gardens. The male, you can see, has quite a long straight stomen and it's filled with pollen all the way around. And as you can see here, there's no fruit behind it. It's just a flower. So once they've opened, just look for a long straight stomen and that is the male flower. If we look at the female flower, you can immediately visually see the difference. It's not a single stomen that's filled with pollen. It has a whole bunch of little pieces to it. And those are all the little sections that have absorbed the pollen from the male. Now, if I move this over slightly, you'll see that at the bottom of the flower, is a little baby Jack B. Little Pumpkin. This is now the key identifier that it's female before the flower opens. And once the flower opens, we can then also visually identify it when looking at the inside that this is indeed the female flower. And when it comes to hand pollinating zucchini, squash, anyone in the cucurbit family, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, you need to have a male. So I just take it below the little section there it snaps off pretty easy. And I'll bring you in close and you can see it's a lovely color and completely filled with pollen. Now what we're going to do, which is a really important part, is we are going to gently take the flower and split it open. And then around the base, we are going to just gently pull the flower away. And you can then see we left with a perfect little flower that is filled with pollen. And this is what we're gonna to use to pollinate the female. So now we have our female flower and we have our male flower. All we're going to do, gently hold the base of the female, take the male and what I do, rub the inside and then rub around the outside as well. Get as much pollen as you can all over the flower. And there we're done. You can see all the pollen has been rubbed off of this one. 
and the female has now been pollinated. And now the next very important part, especially where I live, to prevent pumpkin fly or fruit fly stinging and damage to your plants is to bag them. I use organza bags as of phase one. If you haven't seen my video on preventing fruit fly, pumpkin fly damage, I'll tag it up so you can see that whole process. I got a really good question on why I use organza bags and don't just go straight to stockings. And that's a really good question. And for me, the answer is these flowers are very delicate. If you've worked with these before, you'll, you'll realize how quickly they snap off. And I don't want to be snapping off fruits and stockings can be quite clumsy to work with. They also attach to everything. And if you've worked with these, you'll see there are millions of little spikes. Stockings get stuck to them. So putting a stocking on such a small little fruit is quite difficult and you risk breaking it off. That's why I use organza bags just to start off with. Then I up bag it into a stocking. So how do we do this? Pretty simple. Take your, start, your organza bag, then close the flower up. You can use something if you want. I don't really need to. Then put it over and then go, I'm gonna show you, just below the base and you'll see I don't close it completely. There is still room so that when the flower needs to expand, it can and you're not gonna be damaging it. And then what I do is just add a second one to slide that over the top. And the reason for the second one is that the fruit, fruit fly or pumpkin fly can actually sting through an organza bag. The holes are big enough, but as soon as you add a double one, the stinger can't get through because the layers are basically too far apart. And that is in a nutshell, how to identify male and female pumpkin flowers, squash flowers, how to hand pollinate them and how to bag them. There you have it. Now you know how to make sure that you get a harvest by not having fruits that go brown and fall off unpollinated and also that you don't get fruits that are stung and filled of maggots. As you can see, once you can learn the difference between a male and a female flower, it's pretty simple. Every morning, go out, take the male, hand pollinate the female, bag them up and you're done. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, please share it among your communities. The more we can help each other, the more we can all grow food together. And please subscribe to my journey where you can get more great tips and tricks like this. And until next time, happy growing.